Good morning also, we want to include everyone too, everyone online. Good to have everybody here. Our series you'll find in your worship leaflets. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and blessed be His kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you know secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Give us grace to receive, thankfully, the fruits of his redeeming work and to follow daily in the blessed steps of his most blessed holy life. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God now and forever. Amen. Please be seated for our lessons. The first reading is a reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Thus says the Lord, maintain justice and do what is right, for soon my salvation will come and my deliverance be revealed. And the foreigners who join themselves to the Lord to minister to him, to love the name of the Lord and to be his servants, all who keep the Sabbath, and do not profane it, and hold fast my covenant. These I will bring to my holy mountain, and make them joyful in my house of prayer. Their burnt offerings and their sacrifices will be accepted on my altar, for my house shall be called a house of prayer for all peoples. Thus says the Lord God, who gathers the outcast of Israel, I will gather others to them besides those already gathered. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We'll read in unison Psalm 67 when we break at the asterisk. May God be merciful to us and bless us. Show us the light of his countenance and come to us. Let your ways be known upon earth. Your saving health among all nations. Let the peoples praise you, O God. Let all the peoples praise you. Let the nations be glad and sing for joy. For you judge the peoples with equity and guide all the nations upon the earth. Let the peoples praise you, O God. Let all the peoples praise you. 
The earth has brought forth her increase. May God, our own God, give us his blessing. May God give us his blessing, and may all the ends of the earth stand in awe of him. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, it is now, and will be forever. The second reading is a reading from Paul's letter to the church in Rome. I ask then, has God rejected his people? By no means. I myself am an Israelite, a descendant of Abraham, a member of the tribe of Benjamin. God has not rejected his people whom he foreknew. For the gifts and the calling of God are irrevocable. Just as you were once disobedient to God, but have now received mercy because of their disobedience, so they have now been disobedient in order that, by the mercy shown to them, they too may now receive mercy. For God has imprisoned all in disobedience, but so that he may be merciful to all. The word of the Lord. For out of the heart come evil intentions, murder, adultery, fornication, theft, false witness, slander. These are what defile a person, but to eat with unwashed hands 
does not define. Jesus left that place and went away to the district of Tyre and Sidon. Just then, a Canaanite woman from that region came out and started shouting, Have mercy on me, Lord, son of David. My daughter is tormented by a demon. But he did not answer her at all. And his disciples came and urged him, saying, Send her away, for she keeps shouting after us. He answered, I was sent only to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. But she came and knelt before him, saying, Lord, help me. He answered, It is not fair to take the children's food and throw it to the dogs. She said, Yes, Lord, yet even the dogs eat the crumbs that fall from their master's table. Then Jesus answered her, Woman, great is your faith. Let it be done for you as you wish. And her daughter was healed instantly. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. May the meditation in my heart and the words in my mouth be pleasing to you, O Lord God, my Savior and my Redeemer. Amen. Please be seated, everyone. In other congregations, I've taken biblical passages and then, with I hope the Spirit's help, attempted to retell the story. And stories help us to use our imagination, which is why Jesus has told them so many parables like the one we just heard. They help us to hear what God is saying to us, and when we listen and wonder as our ancestors did by their fires and in their temples and their churches, the Holy Spirit helps us to hear what it is that God is saying. And so today I offer a story that I've adapted and prayerfully you'll hear it and hear in it the Word of God for you today. Jesus wanted to get a little R&R, &R, and so we went to Tyre. After all that had happened, the Baptist's death, Peter's escapade in the sea, it was just good to get away. He wanted to go to the ocean, and the seafood was great. But my gosh, it was hot. One night we were at Jude's house for supper, and the apostles were there along with Jude, his family and a few friends. And we were just sitting down, eating figs and sipping some wine. Suddenly, the door flew open and she barged in. The dogs were sleeping under the table and immediately they jumped up and they began to bark. I tell you what, it was loud. And one of the children began to cry. Now this woman was wild, best way to put it. She was dressed in purple, of all things, because it was hot. And her hair was a mess. She was obviously not invited and did not belong. Crazy, I should look around the room. Now, I stood up immediately. I was scared and also angry as I looked at this hysterical woman. Just what we need, I thought. There goes our vacation. Just when you think you want to get away, another woman shows up. Like that woman at the well. And someday I'm going to sit down and write about that one. Now my brother James was sitting under the lamp at the door, and she moved toward the table. And I called out, James! He held her back when she spotted the master, and he tried stopping her from getting closer to the table. Lord, son of David, she cried. John, James shouted to me, come over here. She just stepped on my foot. So I tried to block her. Have mercy on me. My daughter is sick. She's suffering, she called out to Jesus. She's possessed by a demon. Now the master must have heard her over the noise of the dogs and the children, but he never said a word. 
He didn't even look up from his plate. Now, by this time, not only James and me, but Andrew was hustling out of the door. She was interrupting not only our meal, but Jesus had promised to tell us another one of his fantastic parables. In no way was she going to get in the way of that. The woman struggled a bit, but you didn't have a chance. Hauling nets gives a guy a lot of strength. James and me spent a lifetime doing that, and they don't call us the sons of thunder for nothing. We're big guys, as you can tell. And Andrew was pretty bulked up, too. We got her outside quicker than a bouncer gets a drunk out of a tavern. She was loud and obnoxious. She tried to get around us and tried to get back inside, and she kept saying she had to see this miracle worker. Her daughter was in terrible shape. She needed help. On and on. I mean, cry me a river. Now, meanwhile, my food was getting cold, and I hate eating cold sea bass. So Trims tried to reason with her. Look, he said, really. Making sense, I think. You have no right to be here and bother the teacher. You're a foreigner. You don't believe in anything we believe in. Your people are Gentiles. They're heathens. You don't go to the synagogue. You don't follow the law of Moses. You're unclean. You eat pork. You have no respect. And you're a woman. You smell like a camel. And Jesus is trying to eat, and he's a guest in another man's house, so just will you please go away? I have to see him, she said. I know he can help me. He's done so much for others. Now I butted in. Look, you heard my brother go away. We've told you, you're not welcome here. Jesus isn't going to have anything to do with your type, so just beat it. Now the more we said, the louder she got. She cried. She begged. There was just no reasoning with her. Lady, I said, take a chill pill, please. So finally, James said to me, look, you're the beloved genius. Ask Jesus to tell her to take a hike. Now, if Jesus said something to her, she'd get the picture and maybe we'd have a little peace. So as soon as I opened the door, the dogs began yapping at her. And someone hissed at them to be quiet as I went over to Jesus, bringing her with me. He was sitting with this boy who had been crying earlier, and I said to the master, Excuse me, master. Could you please tell this woman to go away? She is just driving us crazy. So Jesus looked over at his host, and he said to me, I was sent only to the lost sheep of Israel. I have to tell you, Jesus can be really frustrating sometimes. He never gives you a straight answer to a simple question. But for once, he was backing us up. So I turned to tell this wretched woman that the master had told her to make like a tree and leave. And just as I was turning around, she pulled away from me and fell down on her knees at his feet. Lord, help me, she said. And Jesus turned and looked down at her, and she bowed her head and looked at the floor, and then he turned around the room for a moment. The boy beside him was now busy eating a hunk of bread as if nothing was happening. And the dogs were watching the boy eat. You know how dogs are. A few of you have dogs. I can see that. You know how dogs are. Hoping the piece would fall to the ground. And Jude was watching him, wondering how Jesus was going to deal with this mess. It became very quiet in the room as the master looked around. And only you could hear the sounds of flies buzzing over the table and that boy eating. And then Jesus looked down at the woman and he said... It's not right to take the child's bread and toss it to the house. So, now a couple of the disciples were smiling. And I have to admit, I was grinning too. It was such a well-turned phrase.
grace. The kind that only Jesus seemed to come up with, and it made the point well. Touche, Jesus. And as far as I was concerned, it easily disposed of her and all of her kind, just like putting down the Pharisees. Bam! And I caught James looking at me, and I gave him a little bit of a wink. As I did, that woman looked up at Jesus, and she stared him in the eyes. And she said, yes, Lord. She said to him in this incredibly calm voice, and I swear to you, she had a little bit of a smile on her face. Yes, Lord, she said. But even the family pet, the dog, eats the little bits that fall from their master's table. Now, I was stunned. This woman was really too much lippy, rude, obnoxious, unclean, disrespectful, respectable. I could go on. Anyway, now do you know what Jesus did? He chuckled as if this was some sort of cute little contest of wits. And he said to her, Dear woman, you have great faith. For you, your reply is granted. Go home. Your daughter is healed. And she jumped up, weeping and laughing. And Jesus laughed, and then he hugged her. Now the dogs are barking excitedly. They're hopping up and down. Jesus tossed the little boy's head, and he took the piece of bread, and he handed it to the dogs. And the boy was giggling and tossed his bread to the pups. It was irritating. And I shook my head at James. Do you believe this? I just could not understand it. I am an apostle for Christ's sake. How did this woman know what Jesus was going to do? And Jesus, I mean, why in the world would he do that? She did not belong here. She was not one of us. She was nothing but a Canaanite. She was a new woman. And Jesus knew it. I knew it. And the rest of us knew it. I just don't understand Jesus sometimes. He is so frustrating. I don't get it. Just when you think he ought to say, send them away, he says, bring them to me. But the more I spend time with him, it makes no earthly sense. But forgive my tears, but I realize it is just like Jesus. So Heavenly Father, help us to understand loving God Help us to understand that there is no one of us who deserves even the crumbs that fall from your table, but it is always your property to have mercy. Yet you grant to all of us, Jew and Gentile, young and old, rich and poor, black and white, sinner and saint, the bread of life. May we always praise your most holy name. O oh Lord, hear our prayer. Let us stand and confess our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father and the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten by the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us and for our salvation. He came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate for the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. 
We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic Church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. The prayers of the people, Form 6. Please kneel or sit as you are able. In peace we pray to you, Lord God, for all people in their daily life and work, for our families, friends, and neighbors, and for those who are alone, for this community, the nation, and the world, for all who work for justice, freedom, and peace, for the just and proper use of your creation, for the victims of hunger, fear, injustice, and oppression, for all who are in danger, sorrow, or any kind of trouble, for those who minister to the sick, the friendless, and the needy, for the peace and unity of the Church of God, for all who proclaim the Gospel, and all who seek the truth, for Michael, our presiding bishop, and Gregory, our diocesan bishop, for all the bishops and other ministers, for all who serve God and his church, for the special needs and concerns of this congregation. We also pray for the parishes in our diocese, especially for St. Andrew's Church in Fort Pierce, St. Simon the Cernian Church in Fort Pierce. We pray for Gateway to Hope and its soup kitchen ministry in Ocala. We pray for St. Vincent's Center for Children in Haiti. We pray for Ariane and the ministry of the Pelican in Afghanistan. We pray for our adopted chaplain, David Ravenscraft, serving in Kuwait. Hear us, Lord. For your mercy is great. We thank you, Lord, for all the blessings of this life. We will exalt you, O God, our King, and praise your name forever and ever. We pray for all those who have died, that they may have a place in your eternal kingdom. Lord, let your loving kindness be upon them who put, put their, their trust, trust in, in you. you. Please join me for a special prayer during this pandemic. Lord Jesus Christ, our divine physician, we ask you to guard and protect us from COVID-19 and from all serious illness. For all that have died from it, have mercy. For those who are ill now, bring healing. For those who are searching for a remedy, enlighten them. For medical care, you're helping the sick, strengthen and shield them. By your grace, may you remove the evil of disease and replace it with consolation and hope. We abandon ourselves to your infinite love and mercy. Amen. Please join me as we pray for those in the armed forces. Almighty God, we commend to your gracious care and keeping all the men and women of our armed forces, at home and abroad. Defend them day by day with your heavenly grace. Strengthen them in their trials and temptations. Give them courage to face the perils which beset them, and grant them the sense of your abiding presence wherever they may be. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways, to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. 
forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Grant you no goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you, and also with you. Extend to one another the peace of Jesus Christ. Please be seated, everyone. One little thing I want us to keep in prayer of, uh, for this week is also keep in prayer our students, our, our, our kids, and also our grandchildren as they go. Some of them are going back to school this week and pray for their safety and pray God will keep, keep them well. Is anyone here celebrating a birthday or an anniversary this week? Oh my, all these, oh, I should have said, I should have started out with, oh, well, let's, since we're standing, let's do the anniversaries first here. Tony and Greta, I'm going to stay right here, okay? I, I, I'm going to do proper distance in here. How many years are we celebrating? Okay, everyone here, 40 years. That's the big one. Congratulations. <laughs> Tony Diamonds. Diamonds, okay? <laughs> Let's pray, everyone. We'll start with this one here, okay? Oh God, you have so consecrated the covenant of marriage that in it is represented the spiritual unity between Christ and his church. Send therefore your blessing upon these your servants, that they may so love, and honor, and cherish each other in faithfulness and patience, in wisdom and true godliness that their home may be a haven of blessing and peace through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Now there is no social distancing for couples, so I would like to see you kiss your bride. Or hug your bride. Okay. <laughs> Congratulations. And she's not here tonight, but my wife and I are celebrating her anniversary this week. But yes, Tisha and I are celebrating her. If I get it wrong, she's not here to correct me. <laughs> it's a 47. And we have our birthdays here. I saw a few hands. Sam Dale is. Who else is celebrating their birthdays? All the way back. Janet, oh, oh, happy birthday, Janet. Let's offer our birthday prayers. Oh, God. Our times in your hand, look with favor, we pray, on your servants as they begin another year. Grant that they may grow in wisdom and grace, and strengthen their trust in your goodness all the days of their life. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And is anyone here for the first time tonight? If you are, would you mind raising your hand for a moment? Is anyone here for the first time? Again, as always, I'd like to welcome anyone who's here first time online, so thanks for joining us if you're here via, via YouTube or whatever platform we want to use. Walk in love as Christ loved us, an offering of sacrifice and praise.
please stand. All things come of thee, O Lord, and of thy own I have forgiven thee. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. God of all power, ruler of the universe, you are worthy of glory and praise. Glory to you forever and ever. At your command, all things came to be. The vast expanse of interstellar space, galaxies, suns, and the planets and their forces, and this fragile earth, our island home. By your will, they were created and have their being. From the primal elements, you brought forth the human race and blessed us with memory, reason, and skill. You made us the rulers of creation, but we turned against you and betrayed your trust, and we turned against one another. Have mercy, Lord, for we are sinners in your sight. Again and again you called us to return. Through prophets and sages you revealed your righteous law, and in the fullness of time you sent your only Son, born of a woman to fulfill your law, to open for us the way of freedom and peace. By his blood he reconciled us. By his wounds we are healed. And therefore we praise you, joining with the heavenly chorus, with prophets, apostles, and martyrs, and with all those in every generation who have looked to you in hope, to proclaim with them your glory and their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. And so, Father, we who have been redeemed by him and made a new people by water and the Spirit, now bring before you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. On the night he was betrayed, he took bread, said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his friends, and said, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, gave thanks, and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering now his work of redemption and offering to you the sacrifice of thanksgiving, we celebrate his death and resurrection as we await the day of his coming. Lord God of our fathers, God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, open our eyes to see your hand at work in the world about us. Deliver us from the presumption of coming to this table for solace only and not for strength, for pardon only and not for renewal. Let the grace of this holy communion make us one body and one spirit in Christ, that we may worthily serve the world in his name. Risen Lord, be known to us in the breaking of the bread. Accept these prayers and praises, Father, through Jesus Christ, our great high priest, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit, your church gives honor, glory, and worship from generation to generation. Amen. And now as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia, Christ, our Passover, is safe, sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Alleluia. 
the gifts of God for the people of God. Take them and remember us that Christ died for us and feed on him with your heart in faith. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us thy peace. We'll say a prayer of intention for those who are watching online. In union, O Lord, with the faithful of every altar of your church, where the Holy Eucharist is now being celebrated, I desire to offer you praise and thanksgiving. I present to you my soul and body with the earnest wish that they may always be united to you. I remember your death, Lord Christ. I proclaim your resurrection. I await your coming in glory. And since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, I beseech you to come spiritually into my heart. I unite myself to you and embrace you with all the affections of my soul. Let nothing ever separate you from me. May I live and die in your love. Amen. Thank you. 
Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, we thank you for feeding us with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and for assuring us in holy mysteries that we are living members of the body of your Son and heirs of your eternal kingdom. And now, Father, send us out to do the work you have given us to do, to love and serve you as faithful witnesses of Christ our Lord. To him, to you, to the Holy Spirit, be honor and glory, now and forever. Amen. May God give to you and to all those you love his comfort and his peace, his light and his joy, in this world and in the next. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen.